Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, but just when immediately, you're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 109. Day day 3109 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition third edition day 109 we are, we are doing the, we are in the process of covering the topic of probability and today is our ninth video in the series of 15 today we'll do problem number 11 problem number 11 that you will find on page number 320 please turn to page 320 make sure 321 make sure that you have the book in front of you read the problem and then we'll do it together it says, if an integer is selected, if an integer is selected at random from all positive, from all positive two-digit integer, what are the odds that the chosen integer has a four in tens place? What are the odds that it has a four in the tens place if you were to choose one integer at random from all the positive integers? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's, let's find out. I think I left something out. Okay, that's about it. All right, so let's find out, shall we? A four in the tens place out of all positive two-digit integer. Not all positive integer, rather, like I said a little while ago, not all positive integer because that will go on forever, but all two-digit positive integers. Let's, let's begin then. So we know that there are going, there are going to be there are going to be 10, 10 integers with, with 4 in the tens place. Right? There, are, there are 10 such, in, 10, 10 such integers where you have 4 in the tens place, namely, namely 41, uh, 40, 41, 42, 43, all the way up up to the very last one, very last two digit, two digit integer which has a 4 in the tens place is 49. And that's it. Of course 449 also has a 4 in the tens place, but we are talking about two digit integers. And among all the two digit positive integers, the very last one is 49. And, and we also know, and we also know that there are there are all together there are all together 90 90 two digit positive integers so there are all together 90 two digit positive integers they start from 10 the first two digit integer of course is 10 and the very last two digit integer is 99 now don't make a mistake don't make a mistake, it's a classic mistake, people do it in a hurry, when they are, when they are in a hurry, when not, they are not paying attention. Don't make a mistake of saying, don't just make a mistake of doing like this and, and coming up with the conclusion that there are 89 such integers. There are 90 such integers. For example, for example, if somebody asks us how many integers are there, how many integers are there from 1 to 10, obviously from 1 to 10 there are 10 integers. We cannot simply do, we cannot simply do 10 minus 1 and say there are 9 integers. Let's, like, let's take an example even more insane. For example, if somebody were to ask you how many integers are there from 1 to 2. Well, from 1 to 2, there are 2 integers, 1 and 2. But you can't do, but we can't do 2 minus 1 and probably tell the person that there is only one integer from 1 to 2. So don't subtract 10 from 99 and arrive at the conclusion there are only 89 integ such integers. There are 90 integers. There are all together, there are all together 90 two digit positive integers, namely from 10 to 99. 10 to 99. Therefore, therefore, the odds of choosing uh, uh, a, a two-digit integer where we have 4 in the tens place, 4 in the tens place, is simply going to be, well, there are, there are 10 such integers where we have 4 in the tens place out of a total of 90 such integers. There you go, one ninth. 
The odds are one ninth, one out of nine. Let's do part B, shall we? Let's do part B. Part B says at least at least one four in the tens place or the units place. So what are the odds that we end up picking a two digit integer, positive two digit integer which happens to have either which happens to have four either in the tens place or the unit place. So let's find out shall we? Well the tens place we already know we just we have it here so we don't have to and we also know that there are altogether 90 total integers so we don't have to do that work we know there are a total of 90 two digit positive integers there are altogether 90 two digit positive integers the very first one very first positive integers a positive integer which has two digit is 10 so the story begins with 10 and the story ends at 99 those are the only integers that happen to be two digit integers among the positive integers so these are these are the tens digits we already have those we don't have to redo that part. Let's look at the unit digit. Two, two digit positive integers where the unit digit happens to be 4. And there the story will begin with 14, 24, 34, 24, 34, 44, so on and so forth. We're talking about unit digit 44, 54, 64, so on and so forth, all the way up to 94. All the way up to 94. And how many are there? There are going to be nine of them. There are, of course, going to be nine of them because this goes from one to nine. One, two, three. If you look at the tens digit right now, there are nine, nine such, nine such two digit integer where the unit digit happens to be 4, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 9. There are 9 such. And these were 10. These were 10 and we know there are a total of 90 such integers. So obviously it's going to be 10 of those and 9 of these over 90. 19 out of 90. There we go. Is that correct? This answer is not correct. Why is this not correct? Why is this not correct? Because there is one number, one two digit number that's double counted. And the one that is double counted, which is why I rewrote this thing so that you can see here, one that is going to be double counted is the very next one that's going to appear in this list. We have 40, 41, 42, 43, and then the next one is going to be 44. Well, 44 appears here and 44 appears here. It's double counted. It's counted once. It is counted once as a member of this set a set where the tens digit happens to be 4 and it's counted again, the same element is counted again as a member of unit set and therefore because it is counted twice because we discount it twice, because it's double counted to undo the double counting to, do, to undo, we have counted it twice so to undo the double counting we need to subtract one here 10 from here, 9 from here and then minus minus 1 and now the answer is correct. 10 plus 9 is 19, minus 1 is 18, and it's going to be 18 over 9, 90, which is same as 2 over 9 times 10 over 9. 9s are going to cancel out, and the answer is the odds are 20%, one fifth. There is a one fifth chance, or 20% chance, that we'll end up picking a two digit number out of all the positive two digit integers such that it will have. A four either in the unit place or in the tens place. Do you understand? One out of five times. <coughs> let's look at this. Let's look at the same exact problem, a little bit differently, in the context of Venn diagram. You see, this is this is a set. This is a, let's call it the set T because it's tens digit. So here we ha here we have set T, and here we have set U. 
set u to represent the unit digit right here. It set set t consists of 40 through 49, 40, 41, all the way up to 49. It has 10 such digits, 10 such uh, 10, 10 such integers. Set u has nine such integers, where the unit digit happens to be, where where the unit digit happens to be four. It begins with 40, 14, 24, 34, all the way up to 94. But what is going on here is that, what is going on here is that, the 44 will appear here, and 44 will appear here. It is double counted. It should have appeared here, because it's common to both of them. These are overlapping set. These are overlapping set. These are not disjointed set. These are overlapping set. These are not mutually exclusive sets. Do you understand? 44 does not appear, it cannot appear at both places. It appears in the middle. Let's so I know I know I know we are done with the problem, but let's understand it because it's an important concept because I just mentioned the fact that they are not mutually exclusive set. Let's understand what that means. It has to do with long time ago, long time ago on day number. 3091 today day number 91 that is today is 109 oh, today is day 109 on day 91 we learned the concept of on page 300 we learned something called inclusive exclusive principle what this inclusive and exclusive principle says, it says that you must include everything that appears in this set and that set, which we have done so. We must include all 10 of these and then all 9 of these in both of them set. And then we must exclude everything that appears in both of them. We must exclude everything that is double counted. Inclusive, exclusive principle. Now what does the inclusive and exclusive principle would look like in, this, in the context of this problem? It looks like this. You see, here is what this problem in the context of inclusive exclusive problem, the inclusive exclusive principle will be presented as this. It says what is the probability? What is the probability that we get at least at least one four? One four. Either 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 as unit digit or as ten digit or as ten digit. Or if you like we can write it like this. What is the probability that the unit digit is four? or 10 digit is 4 or both right here is the situation where we have both and that both part is, is the part which is which is making these two sets overlap we need the room so I'm going to erase this thing we no longer need this thing let's take a look at it let's finish it up very quickly so that's what we're looking at here What's the probability that you will end up picking a two-digit integer where either the unit digit is four or ten digits is four or both? And that is going to be equal to the probability that the unit digit is four plus the probability that the tens digit is four minus minus the probability that we will end up picking something where the unit digit and and ten digit is equal to four. And that is your inclusive exclusive problem uh, inclusive exclusive principle and if we do the, if we continue our work well the work is right here we just have to rewrite it the probability that the unit digit is going to be four unit digit equal, equal to four right here there are nine of them in 14 through nine, 94 there are nine such such two digit number out of total of 90 the probability that the tenth digit is going to be four ten is equal to four there are ten such numbers out of 90 minus anything that uh, that carries both of these characteristics both of these characteristics where the unit digit is 4 and the tens digit is 4 because that, those are the ones that are going to be double counted here we do, yeah, even though I said those are the ones that are being double counted but we don't have those we only have one this, this is the one that is double counted 44 there is one only one such member that is shared with both of these sets these are overlapping set and there is one such number. There we go. And there now we have the answers. 9 plus 10 minus 1, same thing what we did here, 18 out of 90. But as you can see, these are not 
mutually exclusive sets. If they were mutually exclusive set, if they had nothing in common, we wouldn't have had to we wouldn't have had to worry about this last part because this probability of choosing something where they possess both of these characteristics would be zero. Because the set would not be overlapping. There will be nothing that possesses the quality of both this set and that set. But here we do have one element, one member, that possesses the quality of this set and that set. And therefore we have to uh, take it out and uh, subtract it to, to undo the double counting. Let's do part C. Let's do part C. Part C says, but that's what it looks like, the, the inclusive exclusive principle that we're talking about, that's what it looks like. It says that what are the odds that we have no four in either unit unit digit or tens digit? We don't want any four at all. What are the odds that, that we will pick such one such number? Well, that is same as saying we can, we need the room, so let's erase this thing. The odds of finding such 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 a, such a two-digit integer where it has ni four neither in the unit digit nor the tens digit, which is which is going to be same as the one minus the odds that we find something where either the unit digit is four or the tens digit is four or both or both of them are four. And we found that just now. That answer is eighteen out of ninety or one fifth. The odds of finding such a two-digit integer out of all the positive two-digit integer where the unit digit is four or the tens digit is four or both of them are four, that's one out of five. So one minus this, this probability will be the case where we have no four in either ten unit digit or tens digit. Do you understand? Which is same as saying, which is same as saying one minus the probability that at least, at least one one digit is four. Right here. At least one four we have in either unit digit or ten digit. Which this thing this thing that I wrote here is the same thing as this thing. At least one digit is four. And those odds is one fifth. So it's just one minus one fifth, which is simply four fifth, which is eighty percent chance. Which is which is which, which yields us 80%. There's an 80% chance, 4 out of 5 times, if you were to pick one two, digit, one two digit integer out of all positive two digit integers at random, 4 out of 5 times you'll end up picking something that will have neither, that will have 4 neither as a unit digit nor as a tens digit. This was number 11. There we go. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.